Thank you, Chairman Schatz. And I'd, I'd like to come back to the first question that you uh, brought up with uh, with, with, with um, Ms. Holgate uh, pertaining to Iran and their malign behavior. Um, the Biden administration seeking to rejoin the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. It's an agreement that did not receive the advice and consent of the United States Senate. It's an agreement that I feel is deeply flawed. Since 2018, the IAEA, which is the world's nuclear watchdog, has continued to investigate new evidence of undeclared nuclear materials and activities in Iran. In 2019 and in 2020, the IAEA found evidence of undeclared uranium particles in three sites in Iran, which could indicate potential covert Iranian nuclear activities. So far, Iran has stalled the IAEA's investigation, including their access to nuclear sites. Iran has removed and covered up evidence, and Iran has provided so-called explanations that the nuclear watchdog deems not technically credible. Under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, Iran has, is required to declare to IEA inspectors its use of nuclear material, its sites where it uses such material, and sites where it carries out sensitive nuclear activities. And I want to be clear here, Iran's obligations to the IEA are completely separate from the nuclear deal, and they endure regardless of what happens with the Iran nuclear deal status. So Ambassador Holgate, I'd like to come back and just be clear. Do you agree that Iran is actively frustrating, even stonewalling the IAEA's ongoing investigation of undeclared Iranian nuclear activities? Uh, Ranking Member Haggerty, I, I do understand that that's the case. I'm glad you agree. Do you believe that Iran is in compliance with the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty? I think the issues that are going on with um, both current and historical um, activities create grave concerns about Iran's commitment to safeguards and uh, to peaceful uses. And that's why the United States has been supporting Director General Grossi's efforts to return Iran to a compliant state with its, with its safeguards requirements. Well, I, I, I certainly think what you're saying is that they're not in compliance. They certainly can't be in compliance if they're not willing to answer IEA questions on undeclared nuclear activities. Would you agree with that? Sir, I have not been briefed on the intelligence details of the, the um, current concerns about Iran, so I would hesitate to draw a strong well, conclusion. Let's, on that. let's move on. Um, the IEA's director general has issued several reports on Iran that make it clear that the IEA is serious outstanding concerns regarding possible undeclared nuclear material and the activities that are taking place in Iran today. And due to Iran's lack of cooperation, the fact that Iran is limiting verification and access by international nuclear inspectors, the IAEA's director general has reported that the agency is having a difficult time ensuring that Iran's nuclear program is exclusively peaceful. And in a recent development, the IAEA has said last Sunday that Iran has failed to honor the terms of a deal struck two weeks ago to let international nuclear inspectors into Iran to access and repair equipment for monitoring nuclear materials and activities. Again, the activities that likely are, are being diverted to military purposes. Iran and the IAEA have made this recent deal as Iran faced the prospect of a formal censure by the IAEA Board of Governors for its obstructionism. So Ambassador Holgate, if you're confirmed, do you commit to advocating for the United States to use its voice and vote on the 35 nation IEA Board of Governors in order to hold Iran accountable for its ongoing non-compliance with its nuclear obligations and to censure Iran for repeatedly frustrating the international watchdog's ongoing investigation of Iran's undeclared nuclear activities. Senator Haggerty, I can certainly uh, say that if confirmed, I will use the U.S. voice and vote in the Board of Governors to promote a full return of Iran to IAEA safeguards compliance and to make sure the safe director general has the tools he needs to do that. Well, I appreciate that. I think it's incumbent upon the United States uh, to, to hold egregious proliferators like Iran accountable. The position that you'll be going into will provide that opportunity. And I certainly uh, hope and expect that you will use every bit of United States influence to make certain that we hold actors like Iran and their malign behavior uh, to full account. Thank you. I yield my time back, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, Senator Cardin. 